Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing one of the stranger galaxies out there. A type of unusual galaxies that are extremely rare in the universe, and a type of a galaxy that was completely by accident discovered back in 2007 by several amateur astronomers using a citizen science project. But more importantly, or more intriguingly, a type of a galaxy that was also recently discovered by the James Webb in one of the recent observations. Something that you can see right here in this image, specifically in the image on the right, because this galaxy is also extremely redshifted, and so the color here appears red, even though in reality, this galaxy is almost entirely green, like you see on the left. And because of their unusual appearance, in the last decade, a lot of scientists have been referring to these galaxies as green pea galaxies, or just green peas for short. And that's because naturally, they seem to be kind of spherical in shape, and they also seem to be extremely green. And it's actually their greenness that presents a bit of a mystery. Mostly because they seem to be one of two possible objects emitting this unusual type of light. And that's because, despite a variety of colors we can find in various galaxies out there, the majority of galaxies will still have relatively similar colors. And a lot of smaller, spherical galaxies, similar in shape to the ones that were just discovered called green peas, are very often blue in color because they contain a lot of really powerful stars, creating a lot of energy and also creating a lot of light. Whereas other galaxies might appear a little bit more yellow, especially if they contain a lot of much older stars and do not contain a lot of activity. But generally they all contain relatively similar colors, sort of similar to what you see right here. But as you can kind of see, there is really no green here, mostly because there are no green stars. And one of the older videos on the channel that you can find in the description goes a little bit more through the idea of why there are no green stars possible. But there are still green things out there that we have found even in the Milky Way. And they usually look something like this. This is a typical planetary nebula, or essentially a very thick cloud of gas around a central star, usually a white dwarf, with the radiation coming from the central star, ionizing the gas and making it shine in various colors. And though these can be a lot of different colors, when this gas is predominantly oxygen, it creates an effect that's often referred to as the doubly ionized oxygen glow, something that always ends up producing exactly the same color. And back when this particular glow was discovered by the early astronomers, specifically in the 19th century, they actually even thought that this was some kind of a new element. They referred to it as nebulium. But today, based on various experiments, we know exactly how all of this works. And so it's really due to the presence of oxygen that this beautiful cat's eye nebula receives its green color. And the same goes for pretty much all of the other objects, although some seem to predominantly contain oxygen, which already creates a bit of a mystery. It means that when this particular star started to lose a lot of its gas, for some reason oxygen was the predominant gas. But that's another mystery to explore in some other video in the future, because today we're focusing on the other source of this green glow. Except for planetary nebula, Turns out, the green glow can also come from entire galaxies. And this image from the Hubble Space Telescope sort of shows us eight of them discovered in the last decade. And this is really intriguing because here, something else is creating this oxygen, and then something else is illuminating it, creating the glow we see from really far away. And some of these galaxies that seem to be located at a very specific distance, equivalent to a redshift of 0.25, seem to possess extremely similar features, and all seem to look very similar to one another. For example, they generally have a mass of about 3.2 billion solar masses, that's on average, with a star formation of about 10 solar masses per year. Or to rephrase this, they're about 400 times smaller than the Milky Way galaxy, but seem to produce stars at least 5 times faster. They also do not contain any active nucleus, or basically the black hole in the middle does not seem to be active, yet despite of this, they're relatively easily visible because of their extremely fast star formation and very specific emissions producing that green light. And overall, these seem to represent the least massive yet the most active in terms of star production galaxies in the local universe. Or in other words, compared to all of the other galaxies we've discovered, on average they seem to produce the most stars, despite their relatively small size and despite their relatively small mass. But there are other small galaxies, dwarf galaxies, specifically the galaxies known as BCD or Blue Compact Dwarf, that also have quite a lot of star production, small mass and small size. Here's one. But as you can see, there is no green glow around them. So it's really that presence of oxygen around the galaxy that's then illuminated by all of the new stars that makes these galaxies extremely different and extremely unusual. 
On top of this, it was discovered that they have a much stronger magnetic field compared to a lot of other galaxies, and for the most part seem to contain a lot of young stars, although some old stars have been found in them as well. They also generally seem to be completely by themselves. No partners and also located in a relatively low intensity environment where there's just not enough material. But one of the main reasons it took so long to discover these galaxies is also because they are relatively rare. At the moment, only approximately 40,000 have been discovered out of obviously billions or actually even trillions of galaxies out there, which means that, at least in the local universe, these galaxies do not seem to be very frequent and represent something that might have existed a long time ago, but does not exist much anymore. And this is a really important part. The properties observed from these galaxies actually suggest that these types of galaxies must have been super super frequent a long time ago, and because of their extremely high energy and a lot of ionization power, which by the way causes this green glow around them, their discovery excited the scientists for one main reason. They might finally explain how the universe became reionized, how the universe went from being relatively opaque and somewhat difficult to see through, to essentially transparent like it is today. This period is known as the reionization period, and even today it's not entirely clear what exactly was responsible for making it happen. It could have been really really powerful stars, or exceptionally bright and extremely powerful black holes, but with the discovery of Greenpeace, they sort of became the new explanation. It possibly was a very specific type of galaxies that existed long time ago, and has since become extremely rare. And so if the reionization period was mostly caused by these unusual galaxies, it means that we should be seeing more and more of them as we look deeper and deeper in time. And obviously, to reionize the entire universe, you would require a lot of energy and a lot of these smaller galaxies. Which is exactly why the scientists were so excited to discover three of these green pink galaxies with extremely similar properties and features to what we actually observe much closer to us. As a matter of fact, the spectroscopy analysis revealed that they were practically the same, containing very few heavy elements, a lot of oxygen, with the oxygen then ionized at a temperature of about 50,000 Kelvin, suggesting that these are very, very powerful objects. Most of this reionization is probably caused by very massive, very hot stars, responsible for all of the star production in the galaxy as well. And because these objects are visible in a universe that was only 700 million years old, compared to the previous object that was discovered when the universe was already 10 billion years old, and because three were discovered in a relatively small volume of space, it does indeed imply that these galaxies were extremely common during the reionization period, possibly suggesting that, at least to some extent, they were responsible for making the universe transparent once again. And although obviously it could have also been different types of unusual stars, and of course black holes, the discovery of these very powerful galaxies is definitely one of the more exciting discoveries coming from the James Webb in the last few months. But despite all of this, we still barely know anything about them. Nobody knows how exactly these galaxies evolve or how they form, what relationship they have with other galaxies, or even what happens to them at the end. Do they become something else? Do they eventually sort of disappear, becoming invisible? And more importantly, why is it that we don't see anything in between those two ages? Why is it that no such galaxy was discovered in a period between about 1 billion and about 9 billion years throughout existence of the universe? Is it that they suddenly disappeared and reappeared again? Or is there something else going on here that we just don't understand? Which of course means that it's still an extremely mysterious type of a galaxy. Probably one of the most mysterious discovered in the last decade. Although there was another really mysterious type of a galaxy we discussed relatively recently, also coming from the James Webb, that you can learn more about in the video in the description. But anyway, on that note, well, that's pretty much all we know. A super exciting discovery, but I'm sure there are going to be more studies in the next few months trying to find out what's happening here and what exactly all of this means. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying one for person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.